Hey guys, this is Purni here from Wake Up with Rising Phoenix. Embrace the beautiful, unique you. So as you probably would know, we just released our Halloween palette, which is Resist, Desist, Vanquish yesterday, uh, which is November 11th, 2021. So here is a quick introduction video so that you have a better idea about what this whole collection is about. And you may be wondering why we are releasing this Halloween collection right after Halloween and not on Halloween Day itself. It's simply because this is one of our SG Heritage Series palette and we wanted to stay, stay true to our Singaporean roots where we do not actually celebrate Halloween. But in fact, during the past days where we used to live in Kampung, Kampung is like the village days, that period, especially in the 60s. Whenever November starts, usually the months of November and December, that's when it'll be more foggy and the nights will be longer. And for most people, they will actually encounter more spiritual presence and more encounters with, with supernatural entities. So due to all these reasons, usually the, periods of, um, the period of November till December, it's considered as a dark period. And that's the period where they also believe that the supernatural entities like to come out more and terrorize them. So it's due to this reason that we decided to release this collection in November. And at the same time, the reason why we chose the date as 11th November is simply because this is our 11th year anniversary. So we decided to just release this collection on 11th. And it's also one week right after the power leap. And it tied in with the theme very well because for this collection, we did not just want to showcase on the supernatural entities that terrorize people. We also wanted to showcase on the heroic people who actually saved the day by actually helping the victims and also helping to um, force back these supernatural entities to the places that they came from. And those are actually three um, wonderful type of people that are often not talked about but who still exist to this day and they do offer their services to the people. And usually they do it for a very small sum of money simply because they are just doing it as a service to mankind. And we hope to actually feature these people in this palette simply because we wanted to pay like a homage to them as these are heroes that are often not talked about, but they often put their lives on the line to help these victims. So, uh, you know, ghost stories, are they real? If you were to ask us, we would say that yes, we believe in that simply because we have heard so many stories about people who really had supernatural encounters and managed to escape from them alive. So since this is a very quick introduction video, I will not waste any more time. I'll get right in. And resist disease is simply to, for the people, the victims who try to resist the supernatural presence and the disease, and for the vanquished, this refers to three types of heroic people who help to save these people and save the day. Okay, let's move on. So this is the color layout for this palette. And this is also the relationship tree that you can see here through the colored arrows. And for this collection, due to requests asking for more neutral shades, as well as shades that are metallic, we decided to tone down the shimmer factor and to actually amplify the metallic aspect of these shimmer shades. And that's the reason why you can see more monochrome shades and metallic shades. As for the subtle multi-chrome shades, these are shades that have a stronger base so that they can actually last longer on your eyelids. As we when we first began Makeup the Rising Phoenix, we wanted to create cosmetics that can be used by people in the performing arts. So that no matter how hot the lights are, no matter how hot the weather is, um, no matter how much they were to sweat profusely for the performance and throughout the day, <clears throat> these eyeshadows will be lasting on the eyelids, even if they did not use an eyeshadow primer underneath. So for multi-chrome eyeshadows, however, in order for their shifts to display brilliantly, the base will be the base of the eyeshadows will actually be greatly reduced. And that's the reason why you can see those strong shifts. But here, we have actually added the same base, same strong base that we add to our regular Shima eyeshadows. As a result, the strong shift factor is a bit lesser here. It's a bit more subdued.
However, the lasting power of these eyeshadows are actually on par with the regular shimmer shades that you would expect from a metallic eyeshadow or even a duochrome eyeshadow. So that's the reason why they're labeled as subtle duochrome and subtle multichrome. You will understand more about the relationship tree when we go through the shades later. So let me move on to the next part. So for the teasers for this collection, we just shared some um, teaser trailers just so that you can give you a better idea on the characters that we are featuring in this collection. So for the first teaser trailer, we featured the King Vikramaditan. We featured King Vikramaditan and Vedalam, that's his spectral sidekick. And the reason why we featured these two, although they are not part of um, our Singapore stories, is simply because these two are the only duo who are actually harmoniously working alongside each other, who are able to embark on adventures, and at the same time, they're able to do great service for mankind. And this is not fiction. It's actually a true story based on a true story that was written back in the 4th century, and then it was later scribed and then published in the 11th century. On, during the 4th century, it was actually scribed on palm leaves, as this king is actually... Uh, this king actually belonged to the BC ages. So you can know that it's actually a very ancient tale. But however, most of the historical things and places and events that they mentioned in that palm leaves, it seems they had truly happened. So that's the reason why they have determined that it's actually based on a true story. So just to feature a group, a, a duo who actually harmoniously work alongside each other, we decided to include the shade, which is warrior monk, as the warrior monk is also like an exorcist who is able to combat evil forces because he is very strong spiritually and at the same time he is very very courageous so even when the situation seems grim or even if the entity decides to act even if the entity decides to actually instill fear amongst the people this one person alone the warrior monk alone can actually exit um, can actually assist the exorcist to ensure that a successful exorcism takes place. So this is one person that I have featured and there'll be another warrior monk that I'll be showing you later. So this is the story weaver because the spectral entity wanted to find out what is the nature of this king and through asking him, through telling him stories and asking him questions about the tales and seeing the way that the king responded to each of the tale, the story weaver, as in the Veda, this spectral entity actually understood that the king is actually a very noble man who can actually do great service to mankind. And due to that, the spectral entity actually will decide to assist the king in his mission. And that is how this unlikely friendship was formed. And because due to that, the king also lived to a very long age due to his friendship with this entity. The second warrior monk that we featured in this collection Ah, yes, he's actually a Taoist monk. His name is Wu and he actually is featured in the Mr. Vampire movie where the creature Chiang Shi is being shown. Chiang Shi is actually a, a vampire zombie and this creature was featured in our Dissidents and Deviants palette that was launched last year. And this is the warrior monk who will actually successfully combat them and then subdue them. And for this reason, we decided to include him in this collection since he ties in nicely with our team where we featured Chang Shi last year. So this is Chang Shi, who is the vampire zombie. And for the warrior monk, since the video part, he moves really fast. I was unable to get a clear screenshot of him. So this is the warrior monk who's over here, who's actually the uh, warrior monk Taoist priest. That's how he's labeled in the movie. Okay, next, and she flies. This is a flying entity. Um, this is definitely a malevolent entity. And we have given more details about her on our Instagram page. And the details about her are a bit gruesome. So as a result, I will not be telling that again through this video. You can read up about her on our Instagram page. Beware of the banyan tree. Okay, for this one, for the Chinese community as well as the Indian community, the banyan tree as well as the banana tree, both are actually considered as auspicious trees because uh, for one reason, Lord Buddha actually sat under the banyan tree and he meditated for 10 days and then eventually he attained enlightenment. 
and also for any rituals that we're performing for any auspicious events such as weddings, we definitely will be using the banana tree as well. But at the same time, whenever there's an exorcism that takes place, where the spirits cannot be driven to their actual world that they came from, or if their fate is where they were cursed to actually roam around the earth, usually for exorcists, especially here, they take on a more humane approach by actually binding those entities to a banyan tree or a banana tree so that they actually have a shelter for their head and they actually have a place to rest. And these trees are actually supposed to have a calming effect on malevolent, uh, malevolent entities because these are considered as auspicious trees. So they have a calming effect and they will also help to neutralize the entities. That is the belief. So the reason why we have stated as beware of the banyan tree is simply because you do not know what kind of entity resides in that tree, number one. And number two, we are supposed to show respect and also be very mindful of what we do because there are people who actually desecrate these trees, um, you know, especially when they hit outside or in their camp, especially for NS servicemen. And if they decide to just relieve themselves without saying a prayer or asking for forgiveness before relieving themselves at the tree, usually more often than not, they do get attacked either physically immediately or they will get a really bad visit later at night when they are sleeping. So this is the color layout for this collection. And these are the shades. So for gifts for afterlife and nightly audience, these two belong to the Hungry Ghost Festival. As for the Hungry Ghost Festival, um, the Chinese community actually offer food offerings for their dead relatives. And at the same time, they also burn offerings for them. That, for instance, last time they used to burn models of luxurious cars, luxury cars um, in the fire. And they believe that if the person who had died actually yearned to have a car, but then they were not able to afford a car while they were living, by burning models of cars, they believe, especially during the Hungry Ghost Festival time, if they were to burn those models, they believe that these relatives will actually gain access to having a car in the other realm and they'll be able to actually drive the car and use the car. So this is the sentiment that they have, so they do that. And for now, unfortunately, since the demand has actually gone down for these models, what happens is most of the uh, people nowadays, they just burn hell money. Hell money is actually like glossy gold notes that's printed on like really nice shiny paper, where the numerals uh, on the papers actually depict different uh, currencies. And they believe that by doing that, by burning those currencies, they are actually giving their relatives those currencies to use in the other world. So that's the gifts for afterlife. So usually when there's food set on any altar or it's left on roadside or under any tree during the Hungry Ghost Festival, everyone knows that these are actually food reserved for the ghostly visitors who came to our realm during Hungry Ghost Festival. So as much as possible, they try to avoid stepping on them. And even if there are any sticks that are actually lit there, for their prayers, we will actually make sure that we do not step on any of them by mistake. So this is a way of us showing them respect as well. And next, nightly audience, this is the Gatai performance, the night opera performance for the ghostly visitors that the Chinese community will actually arrange for. So this performance is solely just to entertain the ghostly visitors. And of course, humans can actually watch as well. They can actually sit at the back. So the first two rows will actually be left empty for the ghostly visitors to sit on the chairs and see and enjoy the performance. So what happens if any of the human spectators refuse to sit at the back and to sit at one of the chairs in front? The show organizers will definitely want them not to do that. But if they're stubborn and if they choose to do that out of disrespect, they will let them be and definitely sooner or later they will be punished by the ghostly visitors. That is for sure. So now coming back to after this let's look at this vigil for the dead actually refers to the funeral rites that's performed by the indian community and the chinese community i would say that the malik community as well but for the malik community they actually complete their funeral within the day so it's not exactly a week but it's a funeral they'll observe the rites and then they will uh, yeah complete the ceremony as much as possible early they will not really keep the body for long before the burial but for the Chinese and for the Indians, usually we will hold a week. And this is especially true before COVID happened. We would actually embalm the body and we'll keep the body and keep a week. Holding a week literally means having the funeral for a few days. And embalming the body, it's done just so that the body is fresh, so that 
the body is intact until the whole funeral process is over. And for the during the wake, we will actually observe a few rituals. Like for the Chinese, they must ensure that no black cat crosses over it. For Indians as well, we observe the same thing. And for the Indians, we actually have an oil lamp that we must ensure that the flame does not extinguish throughout the wake, simply because we believe that the light from the oil lamp is the one that's going to guide the soul to go back to where it's supposed to go for its final judgment, whether it is to heaven or to hell. So it's very important that the light remains burning. Otherwise, we are actually forcing the entity to be stuck here on our realm. So that's one. There's actually more ghostly tales related to that as well. But we did not just spook you all out too much. So as much as possible, we just shared accounts, um, some interesting tales that were shared with us by um, our close friends. And as much as possible, we try to avoid the gory tales that we have heard. So Red for Vengeance actually refers to the wrathful spirit that actually this human who has been wronged when they have been living and then they choose to commit suicide and they were wearing red attire when they committed suicide. And because of that, they are actually able to come back as a wrathful spirit and exact their revenge on the person who had wronged them. And after that, that person, that person's soul actually rests in peace. So for Red for Vengeance, this is an entity that's going to be around forever. After it has exacted its revenge, justice has been served, and then this soul will actually rest in peace. But it's a very important aspect in our Singaporean culture as well as Malaysian culture because we have heard many tales about this, um, both in the Chinese community as well as the Indian community. Our mom has actually told us a story about uh, a girl who had committed suicide wearing red when um, she was a teenager and that woman who had committed suicide was actually like in her late 20s and the story was quite gruesome and that's the reason why we did not include that story but we shared the story given to us by a close family friend, a police officer, a retired police officer who shared his account on coming across a similar case that can be compared with this rape for vengeance. The exorcist, you know, these are the three humans that we have placed in this palette, the exorcist, the warrior monk, and the medicine man. Now, the difference between the exorcist and the medicine man is simply, the difference between the exorcist and the medicine man is that the exorcist, as you know, he is there to exorcise the evil entity and to get rid of it for good. And the warrior monk will assist him as much as possible. But for the medicine man, however, he's of neutral alignment. That means, he is a practitioner of both the white magic as well as the black magic. And he believes that he, as long as he's able to serve the people and able to assist them and address their needs, he is doing them a favor and a, and a service to mankind. So we wouldn't say that he's evil, but it's just that if someone wants to exact a revenge on someone or who wants to punish someone by doing black magic, they are going to seek this person, the medicine man. So due to this reason, many people actually look at the medicine man with fear and they are also and they also try to avoid him actually generally in the community. But however, whenever there's an exorcism that's taking place and if the entity is especially very strong, usually the exorcist will call upon the medicine man since the medicine man is well versed in the white magic as well as the black magic. So if the entity were to create any type of trouble and use any black arts against them, the medicine man will actually be able to actively combat against that evil entity since he is well versed in white magic as well as black magic. That literally means he is able to protect the victims and at the same time, he's also able to destroy the evil entities since he's well versed in both the white magic as well as the black magic. For the exorcist, his duty is basically to drive away the evil force and or to capture it and then release it elsewhere. For exorcists, it's very rare to hear of a story where exorcists actually destroyed an evil entity. Usually for the medicine man, he is the one who actually has that spiritual capacity since he is not just spiritual capacity. Since he has that knowledge of the dark arts as well as the white arts, he's well versed in both worlds. He is able to do that effectively. Okay, next for wrathful creatures. Okay, just now I had mentioned about the Story Beaver, as well as the warrior monk, Vikramaditan, as well as the Vedalam. So these two are the characters that I had shown just now in the teaser trailer. 
So if you were to just focus on the other Raku beings, that would be beware of the Banyan tree. Now, the Banyan tree is the place where um, these evil entities, um, the Banyan tree is where the evil entities um, such as wrathful spirits or even spirits, entities that have been just looking for a vessel or a human to occupy just so that they can bide their time and not return to hell. These are the type of entities that are usually captured and binded and then forced to be on the banyan tree or the banana tree. But it's actually a more human way of releasing them there instead of actually capturing them in a bottle and throwing them into the sea. So since we do not know what kind of entity actually um, stays in the banyan tree, it's very, very important that we approach these trees with respect as we also do auspicious rituals for, um, with these trees, banyan tree as well as banana tree, especially for the Indians. And for the Chinese, especially the Buddhist community, since Lord Buddha attained his um, enlightenment under the banyan tree, they also treat the banyan tree with respect. But since this also happens to be the tree where an entity can be residing in, it's very, very important that we approach these trees with caution and try our best not to desecrate the tree at any cost. Even if someone were to just chop down these trees, if there's any entity that has been living there, this person is actually depriving those entities of their home. As a result, they will be punished and they will be attacked. So the best thing is if you were to see a banyan tree or a banana tree, just be safe, just avoid them at all costs. Next one. Tiny sinister tree, uh, sorry, tiny sinister kid. Okay, this is the entity that also flies and it's really tiny and its name starts with the letter T. You know which one I'm talking about, especially if you're a Singaporean or a Malaysian. And this is a malevolent um, entity as it really just follows the master's orders. If the master were to task it to if the master were to give it a task to actually harm a certain family, this entity would do it. So it's not entirely harmless and just steals and that's it, no. Um, it really just follows the master's orders to a T. And the way it was formed, the way it was created, and the way it feeds, the way it survives, the way it lives, um, it's just a bit gruesome and it's definitely not for the faint of heart to know about it. So that's the reason why we excluded those details. But since this is a creature that's very unique to Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia especially, that's the reason why we decided to include this um, in this collection. Sorry, just hold on. Okay, next will be Tempting Enchantress. Okay, this is uh, a similar version of Western world's succubus. For this creature, however, she does not just visit the man in his dreams. There are two versions. One version is the beguiling version where she pretends to be a damsel in distress. And usually, if the young man is spiritually very strong, he'll be able to see her true appearance where she's not very pretty. And he'll be able to discern that there's something really quite wrong with her. And as a result, he will not really approach her to help. But if he is a lust-driven young man who spends most of his time in a day in just lust-filled activities. He would actually, his spiritual radar will actually be very low. As a result, he will not be able to discern and know that she's actually a malevolent entity. So the beguiling version will actually befriend him just like a regular woman and then she will be haunting him. And of course, like all couples, they will be intimate with each other. But during the acts of intimacy, she will actually slowly suck out his soul. Yes, his soul will be slowly sucked. Soul as in his life force. So eventually, the young man will become weaker and weaker. And he will be falling more sick. And it will come to the point where he wouldn't be able to um, wake up and walk out of his bed when he wakes up. In the he won't even be able to walk when he wakes up in the morning. And as his health declines, his love for her will increase more and more and more, where he literally needs to see her just to be alive. And that's how this creature actually toys and plays her victim, because she also needs to keep the victim alive so that she can just slowly and surely feed on their life force. So if the affected young man's family is quite sharp and they're spiritually strong, they'll be able to discern very quickly that their son is now in love with the woman whom he's actually spending most of his time with per day and he's actually growing weak and 
weaker and weaker where there is no medical explanation for that no doctors can discern what is wrong with him so if these people bring that young man to an exorcist early he will be able to be rescued and his health could actually be restored but if they were to bring him at a very late stage to the exorcist they would be able to remove the entity from the young man's body but however it would take the young man a very long time to regain back his old strength and usually victims of um this creature they are believed to actually age rapidly as in they would look much older than their actual age and that's the reason because and and the reason for that is because they are slowly dying while they are living since their life force is being slowly removed from their bodies without their knowledge and the second version of this tempting enchantress is actually the malevolent version where she just attacks and feeds on the last field men and she will only target the last field men simply because she will be able to fool them with her appearance and after that she would just feed on them and that description has been given on our instagram page please do check it out since i just wanted to make a very quick introduction video so that you can just get the background story and the reason why we have included these shades in this collection and the last shade will be and she flies okay this is another malevolent entity just like the mummy dearest entity that starts with the letter p in our dissidents and deviants palette this entity her name also starts with the letter p and this entity is also a bit gory and gruesome and we do not want to gross up our <laughs> we do not want to gross up our fellow beauty lovers but at the same time this entity is very unique to southeast asian countries and this entity is only and this entity is still being reported to be being seen in malaysia and indonesia and there are many reports where they were saying that some victims were nearly being attacked but then they were saved in the nick of time by their family members who actually managed to yank them out of this entity's grasp so since she's very unique to our southeast asian countries and since this entity was reported to be seen in the early 90s in singapore itself we have included her in this collection itself i'm sorry if my chat creaks because um whenever i lean it just creaks a bit so if the sound comes up sorry just ignore that sound so these are the colors in this collection these are the first three shades you can see here sorry so the first three shades red for vengeance vigil for the dead the exorcist and the next three will be beware of the banyan tree gifts for afterlife nightly audience the last two gifts for afterlife and night the audience the last two shades gifts for afterlife and night the audience um they are part of the hungry ghost festival the story weaver the warrior monk these two are part of the king vikramaditya story the medicine man tiny sinister kid tempting enchantress and she flies so these are the shades of our resist disease vanquish collection so here you can see the okay for this okay for these arm swatches i had actually placed the colors a bit further apart from each other just so that the, the shimmers would not mingle with each other because some of the shades are metallic shades and i just didn't want them to be tainted by the other shimmers and these were actually placed on my arm without any eye shadow primer so they are just they will just appear like this and in case you are wondering about my skin tone i am nc42 in mac 42 or 45 42 <laughs> i'm nc42 in max so this is how the eye shadow will appear on a medium skin toned person in case you're wondering about my complexion so this is the collection guys and the photographs and videos were taken under one single white light and we did not use any ring light as we didn't want the harshness of the ring light to wash out the shimmers we wanted to capture the shimmers as much as possible so that's what we have done now what's the difference between this year's palette okay which is resist disease vanquish and if we were to compare with last year's palette which is dissidents and deviants palette this year's palette 
focuses just on creatures, supernatural creatures and people who are actually unique to Singapore, who are actually living in Singapore. And um, I would say these are the supernatural entities that are unique to Singapore and Malaysia, mostly unique to Singapore and Malaysia only. So since this collection is part of our SG Heritage series, so that's the reason why we only narrowed down the supernatural entities and the people just to Singapore itself. But for last year, for Dissidents and Deviants palette, which is actually a sister palette for this year's palette, here we have showcased on certain supernatural entities, both from the Western world as well as the Asian world. So you can see the countries here, some of the Asian countries. Mami Dearest is from Malaysia. Yes. And at the same time, Elk, which is actually the sleeping entity, the entity that actually gives you sleep paralysis and attacks you in your sleep. Or even if you were to awake, even if you were to wake up from your sleep, you could be attacked by this entity that um, that's commonly found in Germany. So these are the type of stories that we had read before in our earlier days. And then we compiled those and then we also checked on two accounts that shared by people on YouTube. And with that, we gained the inspiration to create this collection. And we did a separate video on this that's more detailed. So do check that out when you see that on our YouTube channel. If you have not subscribed already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and also join our Instagram page. Our Instagram page is rising.phoenix.makeup. So what is the color difference that can be seen in the Dissidents and Deviants palette as well as the Resist Disease Vanquish palette? Our customers had actually requested that they wanted more neutral looking shades. So that's the reason why we included more metallic shades for this collection. And some actually requested for more subdued, lesser shimmer shades. So what we did was we reduced the amount of shimmer in our eyeshadows, but we amplified the metallic factor in these eyeshadows so that's the reason why we are see you are seeing more monochrome shades as well as metallic shades and you're seeing more subtle multi-chrome shades because they have a stronger base so that means they have a longer lasting ability to just last throughout the day on your eyelids despite the weather and despite how much you have to sweat because we are aware that some people actually literally sweat on their eyelids and they you know sweat profusely and even if you have that problem this will last and we have actually applied this on our arm and just um, placed our arm under running water. The colors did not budge until we rubbed the colors with our fingers, then they moved. So we can assure you that these have strong color pigmentation as well as they are resistant to a certain degree against hot weather as well as sweat. So this is the palette art book that we introduced last year. We just wanted to test out and see how our customers would receive this because we were very interested to create our own artwork for each of our collection. But we didn't quite know how the beauty community would accept this, especially our customers. So for last year, since COVID began, and also because most of our customers actually also happen to be young mothers as well, we wanted the palettes to be also child-friendly, especially our palette artwork, so that you know, when these children were to rummage through their mother's eyeshadows, they wouldn't get a root shock for their lives. So for this reason, we created two types of palette artwork. One is the masked version of Mummy Dearest and the other one is the unmasked version. And the man that's standing opposite her is the dissident, Mr. Ashwatthama. He's actually a warrior. He's a warrior that was born to a sage and then due to rats taking over him, in the end, he finally became a spectral being. So he's actually a dissident who actually eventually became a deviant. And for Mummy Dearest, obviously she's a deviant. So that's the reason why for dissident, we placed him on the cover. And then for deviant, we placed her on the cover. And then this year for our Oriental Rhapsody collection, we decided to showcase the characters in the collection. So you can see Ho Yi and then Chang Er to represent the Mooncake Festival. And then you also have the Jade Rabbit here, Butterfly Lovers here. For the Lunar New Year, they were to, there'll be actually, um, there'll be fireworks as well as firecrackers that they'll be lighting up. So that's the reason why we have firecrackers here. And this is the year of the ox. And that's the reason why we have the ox here with the year 2021. And this is, I have seen the name is Lu Shuang. Maybe I'm wrong. This is the name that we have actually used for our collection. And this is the Jade Emperor 
of the heaven. So this is a king of the kings in the heaven, and he actually is shown to be showing, giving his blessings to this couple. He would be giving his blessings to this couple in the story. If you were to read, you will see that he actually gave them the blessings, and that's the reason why the couple can actually meet each other once every year during the Mooncake Festival. The gates of heaven will open, and then they will they will let down a celestial bridge so that. Chang Er can actually descend, and Ho Yi can actually walk up, and they, and the two husband and wife can actually eventually meet every year. To know more about the story, please read our Instagram post. And then the Jade Emperor also blessed the butterfly lovers because these are ill-fated lovers who eventually died, but at least they were reunited in the afterlife by being butterflies. And then here you can see the ill-fated poet who actually took his own life due to the grief that his nation has now been taken over by another emperor. Because that's how patriotic he was, and to commemorate that, they actually um, hold this dragon boat fest festival. They hold this dragon boat festival because the, on the day that the poet had died, and when the people were looking for him, they wanted to ensure that the fish would not feed on his body. So they dropped rice, they dropped rice dumplings into the river so that the fish would feed on that instead, instead of feeding on the poet's body. So now we have the Dragon Boat Festival where young men will be taking part in this. And at the same time, people also cook these rice dumplings at home and they enjoy it with the family because this also is an occasion for the family to come together and spend some time together. And here you can see the mooncakes and of course the flowers, cherry blossom flowers. So that's what we did for the artwork for the Oriental Rhapsody. Uh, this was... This caused lots of tears and sweat. As you can see, we are not artists by any means. We are art enthusiasts. So when, you, when it came to working with different mediums and as well as colors, um, we experienced lots of difficulty and we had to recolor this artwork lots of times before we finally decided on this. So for this year's palette, I mean, for this Halloween collection, we decided to keep the design minimal but at the same time also, we wanted to amplify the fear that is experienced by the victim. At the same time, we also wanted to show that not all entities are downright hairy, ziggy, scary looking, but that they could actually come in the, dis in the disguise of very glamorous looks. So that's how we came up with this artwork here. So this is done with um, touch new markers and <laughs> Prisma color color pencils. And for this, we decided to just showcase a young man and when we got the young man, when we draw him out and then we decided that, okay, let's just choose an entity that, you know, is someone that he could have trusted and gone near, but after that regretted. So it, she has to look a bit beautiful and more um, suitable. Who can she go in line with the contemporary times? And that's the reason why we actually created her with this, um, with this, very striking highlighted hair just to show the deep contrast and just to show that she looks a bit different and off. Just a bit off from the regular females. It also give her striking eyes. And of course, if you had to just focus on the eyes itself, it looks a bit ghostly. But obviously, this man, unfortunately, is not spiritually strong. So I guess he did not really know the danger that he was going to get himself into. And... We didn't want to show like a gory scene or of a victim actually getting abused and attacked. Instead, we just wanted to showcase that a victim was in a deathly embrace with the entity. So you would have already known which entity it is. Yes, it's the tempting enchantress. And we just tried as much as possible not to make her look too garish. I mean, through the teeth and the mouth, yes, she looks a bit garish. But other than that, we wanted to make her look as... Um, as much as a regular female as possible, but also to make her look a bit weird. So we gave her more ashy appearance. And as you can see here, this is a nail that actually goes in line with the banyan tree shade, since the entity is actually bound there. So we wanted to just give you this backstory about this young man who actually unwittingly released his entity that was resting in a banyan tree. And since she was angry, she actually now was like trying to attach herself with him. Yes, so this is the palette artwork for our Resist, Diseased, Vanquish collection. 
So this collection, as mentioned earlier, it was launched yesterday on November 11th, 2021. The reason why I'm mentioning the year is so because in future, if you were to look at this YouTube video, at least you will know which year this collection was released. And thank you so much for your support, guys. Uh, since yesterday till today, we've been receiving so many orders and we are so, so thankful. Thank you so much for your support, guys. We truly thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Is due to your support that make up the Rising Phoenix you exist. Thank you so much for your support. Once again, thank you so much for supporting our small business. And for those of you who have supported us by buying this palette, we truly hope that you enjoy using the shapes in this collection and also enjoy looking at this artwork. And uh, we decided to actually have two versions of this um, artwork. We also draw her with mask. But we saw that when we did that, she just looked like a regular female and it didn't really... Um, tie in with the fear concept because the man is really freaking out in this picture and if she were to wear the mask it didn't go well the, the fear that he displayed did not really match well with the woman if she were to wear a mask so that's the reason why we decided to leave her as unmasked so if you have any questions about this collection or any questions about the shades or any questions about the backstories of these um, supernatural entities don't hesitate just leave us a comment and you would like to know your thoughts on this. And please, guys, if you enjoy using this collection, we really appreciate it if you can give us a if you can leave us a Google review, as this will really help us to reach out to more beauty lovers, like just like yourself. And if you have not subscribed already, do subscribe to our YouTube channel and our Instagram page, which is rising.phoenix.makeup. So thank you for your time, guys. Thank you for patiently watching this video all this while. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend. See you guys.